Uh, hi, uh, my name is Tan Sederas. I'm working with Sivan Koenig at the University of Southern California. And today I will talk about subgoal graphs. Uh, so basically, subgoal graphs are constructed from grids by preprocessing them. And they can be used to find shortest grid paths much faster than A-star on grids, almost by two orders of magnitude faster. And the topic today is about how to modify subgoal graphs to find any angle paths. Uh, so this is mostly a paper about experimental results, and I'll be giving a lot of background on this talk, both on any angle path planning and subgoal graphs. And the talk after this is also about subgoal graphs, so this information might be helpful. Okay. So the main problem we're uh, considering is path planning. We have an environment, we have obstacles in the environment, we have a start and a goal location, and we want to find a short path between these two points that doesn't collide with the obstacles. And it has applications in robotics and on video games, uh, among other areas. Um, so the most straightforward way, the simplest way to approach this is to just uh, construct a grid out of the environment with blocked and unblocked cells, and construct a graph out of this grid, and search this grid to find the shortest path. The problem with this approach is, as you might notice, that it, uh, the grid path is longer than a uh, shortest path on the continuous environment, and it has turns in free space. Um, another approach to this might be to use visibility graphs instead of grids. So in visibility graphs, if your environment happens to have only uh, polygonal obstacles, you can just place subgoals at the convex corners of these obstacles, connect all the sorry, not subgoals, vertices, uh, connect all the pairs of vertices that are visible from one another, and then search this graph, and the path is guaranteed to be a shortest path on the, grid, uh, on the continuous environment. The problem with visibility graphs, however, is that the number of edges of a visibility graph can be quadratic in the number of the vertices. So it can be kind of slow to search and construct. So with these two methods, you can see that there's a trade-off between path length and computation time. And any angle path planning algorithms come into play here, and they aim to offer better trade-offs of path length and computation time. So I'll give you a, the, basically any angle path planning algorithm use an underlying graph representation uh, and a small representation like grids, but they don't <coughs> uh, constrain the movements to use the edges of the grid or the underlying graph. So I'll give you a very quick example. It's a star with post smoothing you basically find the shortest path on the grid, and after the search, you just smooth the path by shortcutting the midpoints, so to make the path shorter. This is not a perfect solution, however, because uh, smoothing often doesn't leave the, uh, th doesn't change the topology of the path, and the search does not know how short the smoothed path will look like, so it's kind of uninformed on that case. So the lesson here is to just um, interleave the search with the smoothing. So in this case, you can see that this red path is the shortest grid path, but smoothing would, uh, would not make it shorter. So that's exactly what theta star does. It does, it interleaves the path smoothing with the search. It's a very slight variation of A star. So suppose that we are expanding a vertex and we've generated a vertex, and we want to figure out what the parent of that vertex is going to be. So there are two possibilities considered by A star. One of them is if it already has a parent, maybe that will be its parent. And the second possibility is the expanded vertex, the vertex that is currently being expanded. Uh, now, theta star considers a third possibility, and that is the parent of the vertex that is being expanded. So I'll give you a quick example here. Um, you can see that uh, like the, the red uh, vertex here is the vertex that is being expanded, the blue vertex is the successor, and the green vertex is the parent of the expanded state. So A star here would set the parent of the blue vertex to the red vertex, but theta star first performs a line of sight check between the blue and the green vertices, and since it succeeds, it sets the parent to be the green vertex and updates the G value accordingly. So now we have a much more informed G value for this vertex and it will help us find uh, shorter any angle paths. So our contribution here will be a new any angle path planning algorithm that is based on theta star and subgoal graphs. 
So basically, we'll be using theta star on subgraphs core graphs instead of A star, and we'll make some small modifications to the sub core graphs. And the resulting algorithm dominates theta star on the path length and computation time trade-off. Uh, it, it finds slightly shorter paths, and it is much faster. Well, there are other any angle algorithms that I haven't mentioned, uh, and I will get to them in the experimental results. I will just show results comparing against these algorithms. So before I go into sub simple subgraph graphs, like actually I will talk about different variants of subgraph graphs. But before doing that, I just want to mention that in the original version of subgraph graphs, we placed the vertices at the centers of grid cells, but for the any angle version, we moved them to the corners of grid cells. Uh, like most any other uh, most other any algo any angle path planning algorithms do, um, and this doesn't change how how they operate. So basically, simple subgraph graphs are visibility graphs on grids. We place the uh, subgoals at the corners of the, at the convex corners of obstacles because they are the optimal way of going around obstacles. But instead of connecting all the pairs of visible vertices, we will connect vertices that are direct H reachable. And I will get to this definition in a bit. And the vertices, the edges in the subgo graph actually correspond to shortest grid paths. So their length is also the octile distance between the vertices they connect compared to the Euclidean distance. So I'll define direct H reachability now. It is like, let's assume we have two vertices A and B on the grid, and let's assume that the grid has no obstacles. Now, the set of all the shortest paths between A and B form a parallelogram shaped area. And if any of these paths is unblocked in the actual grid with the obstacles, we call A and B H reachable, meaning that you can go from A to B using the heuristic distance cost. If all of these are unblocked and none of these paths contain any subgoals, intermediate subgoals, uh, then we call them direct H reachable. So basically, we have a proof showing that if we connect all the uh, vertices that are direct H reachable, we can, find, we can use simple subgraph graphs to find shortest grid paths. And this is how they are used. It's very similar to visibility graphs. You connect the start and goal to, the, to their respective direct H reachable subgoals. You search this graph to find a path on the subgoal graph. And then you follow the subgoals on the grid. So, we also have an algorithm to identify all the uh, direct H reachable subgoals from any given vertex very quickly. And we use this algorithm to connect the start and goal to the graph and also to construct the simple subgoal graph. And it can be constructed in around 100 milliseconds at most in our experiments. So it turns out the set of the simple subgoal graph edges is a subset of the visibility graph edges. And there's a very quick proof for that, visual proof. Uh, direct H reachability means that all these blue paths must be unblocked. And from this, we can easily infer that this red path must also be unblocked. So to sum up, simple subgraph graphs basically are, have the same vertices as the visibility graphs, but they only have the subset of the edges. And it is enough to find shortest grid paths. And they are faster to search compared to grids, so that's why we want to use theta star on subgo graph instead of on the grids. So now I'll describe some small modifications for the any angle version of subgo graphs, simple subgo graphs. Um, the first one is once you find a pattern on the high level graph, you don't need to follow it on the grid. You can just follow them in, in straight lines. The second one is also very simple. We use Euclidean distance as edge lengths and as the heuristic rather than the octile distance. And this makes us, this helps us find shorter any angle paths because the search is more informed. And the third one is we use theta star instead of a star. So to sum up, sub graphs, simple sub graphs are sparse visibility graphs. They are faster to search compared to grids. And we can use theta star on them to find short any angle paths. So now I'll move to and level subgo graphs. Um, so basically, we seen that we can use A star on simple subgo graphs to find shortest grid paths, or theta star to find short any angle paths. We can also use a, some kind of a hierarchical search method 
to make the searches even faster, along with A star and theta star. So the method we've come up with is n-level subgraph graphs. They're basically constructed from simple subgraph graphs in a pre-processing phase. I'll just give the general idea here. I won't go into any details. Um, you pre-process it and partition the subgoals into different levels. And this partitioning satisfies a property, which in turn allows us, allows the searches to ignore most of the subgoals that are not at the highest level. Uh, and still be guaranteed to find shortest paths on the grid. So this is just to give an intuition how this works. So on the left, uh, you'll see a simple subgraph graph. And when searching it, we'll consider this whole graph plus the start and go vertices. And on the right uh, is the highest level vertices of a two-level subgraph graph. And when searching it, we're only going to consider these vertices plus the start and the goal and some intermediate vertices that will be used to connect the start and goal to the graph. So it is much faster. It's almost three times faster in this case. Um, one detail I want to point out about n-level subgraph graphs is that um, during this construction, we can add extra edges to the graph in order to make the online search much faster, around three times faster in this case. In, on game maps in our experiments. And basically, the only modification we have to make to the n-level subgraph graphs is to just add edges between vertices that are visible, along with the changes that we make to the simple subgraph graphs. Uh, I also want to point out that the hierarchy that we use is very similar to contraction hierarchies, it turns out. And we haven't done a comparison yet, but it's planned for future work. And it might turn out that using contraction hierarchies on simple subgraph graphs might be better in both the grid case and the any angle case. Okay, so now I'll give some experimental results. Um, we have results on game maps and random maps. They're from Nathan Sertovan's uh, repository. And uh, one thing that you want to that I want to mention is that we perform path smoothing after the searches of all the any angle algorithms here because we find that it is very fast and it often makes the paths a little shorter. So here's the figure that compares the algorithms on game maps. As you go to the left, the algorithms are faster. As you go down, they find shorter paths. So there is an algorithm called Anya, which always finds the true shortest path on grids. Uh, I want to point it out. And so and we compare, we have simple subgraph graphs, two level subgraph graphs, and n level subgraph graphs. The simple subgraph graph is the sub one. So we see that uh, two level subgraph graphs and ANYA dominate all the other algorithms except for n level subgraph graphs in the average self humility and runtime trade off. Um, and different, ver different levels of hierarchies in subgraph graphs have different trade offs. So if you don't have much pre-processing time, you can just use simple subgoal graphs, uh, which, is, which only takes half a second at most. Or uh, if you're not concerned with the paths that you find, the length of the paths that much, like 0.1% of humility isn't too much, you can just use n-level subgoal graphs, which is 21, 21 times faster than the next fastest algorithm, which is block race star. Or a good trade-off seems to be using two-level subgoal graphs. And it turns out that on random maps, uh, I'm only showing two level subgraph graphs here, but the other two variants are very close to this point. Uh, and it turns out they don't do so well. The reason being that uh, random maps have many corners, and simple subgraph sub graphs have many vertices because of that. And they're still faster than A star, but block A star outperforms them in this case. So in conclusion, Subgraph graphs are basically sparse visibility graphs that provide guarantees on finding uh, shortest grid paths. They are much quicker to search compared to grids. And by using theta star and making some small modifications, they can be used to find uh, any angle paths, short any angle paths, very quickly. And it is best to use them in game maps compared to uh, more structured maps like game maps compared to random maps. Thank you. Mm -hmm.